Welcome. In this session, we will discuss completing lock work. Let's define what lock work is. When lock work is issued on a work order, it will usually address the following knob locks, deadbolts, lock sets, and a lock set is a knob lock and a deadbolt, garage doors, and padlock and hasp. Be sure to read your work order carefully to decide what needs to be done at each property. Sometimes a client will order only a knob lock, sometimes they will order everything on this list, but it is important to find out exactly what each client wants done at each property. When completing lock work for the first time at a property, you must gain access first. Best practices are to use a pick, tension bar, or pick gun, look for an open window or door. If a sliding glass door is present, this is your best option. If necessary, drill the lock set. But whatever you do, do not use hammers or wrenches, do not pry doors open with crowbars, and do not kick or use your weight to break open a door. You will be responsible for the door if you damage it. There are many ways to gain access in this business, but it is important that you gain access quickly. Try each method and find out what works best for you. Let's briefly discuss why lock work is ordered. In a pre-sale environment, the lock work is ordered to provide access for our clients and inspectors. The purpose of it is not to lock the owner or the tenant out of their house. In post-sale work, the purpose is to secure the house completely and to only allow access to the realtor, clients, inspectors, and other REO vendors. When completing lock work, make sure you have the right locks with you before you arrive at the job. Purchase your locks from a preservation supply company, such as U.S. Hardware Supply or MFS Supply. Do not purchase them from a retail store, as this is cost prohibitive. Nothing slows you down more than not having the proper tools and materials when you arrive on the job site. Always read your work order to verify what key code is required. Never assume that it's always a 35241 or an A389 or something else. The work order will always tell you what the proper key code is. Read the work order to find out what door or doors need to be rekeyed. It's not always the front door, it's not always the side door, it's not always the back door. The work order is very specific about which door can be secured, so be sure to check your work order first. So let's take a look at a specific work order here. I've got an LPS work order in front of us, and it's a Wells Fargo order. And I want to scroll down until I find the lock, lock work, and I've got it highlighted here. You notice it says to complete the lock change on the front door only, but if we're unable to complete the lock change on the front door, we're, we can go ahead and change it on the second door, secondary door, but we need to state the reason why. So if there's only a front door there, and there's not a secondary door, then obviously we're going to change the front door, but we have to say that there is no back door or side door. The key code should be based on the last digit of the loan number. Okay, so let's go up to the top here and the loan number ends in 7. So we'll come back down here and we can see here that a 7 for loans ending in 7 44535 for loans ending in 7. So we're going to rekey this building to 44535. If you find that the door is kicked in and it can't be rekeyed for some reason or this type of thing, it's okay to use a 389 padlock and hasp. Make sure that your work order says it's okay to use the A389 padlock and has before you do it. Also, we don't want to be screwing in into any solid front doors or any antique front doors or that type of thing. So just if you have any questions, please call from the site. This is a nice, nice work order in particular because we're able to lock all remaining doors, sheds, and outbuildings with lock work present at arrival. If unable to secure the remaining doors, sheds, and outbuildings with lock work present at arrival, secure and bid after the fact. So what this means is they want the house secure. If there's outbuildings and sheds that don't have locks on them, we're supposed to secure them with a padlock and hasp. If there is a side door, maybe that goes into the garage and the lock's all busted up and you can't lock it, it's okay to put a lock on. But we need reasons why you put that lock on and change that lock. So remember, bid after the fact, it's all according to the pricing that you've agreed with GCP for to um, do all lock work. And then here's the garage door opener. Unplug automatic garage door opener and leave the drive mechanism engaged. So we're supposed to unplug it, be sure to take a picture before, unplug it, and then take a picture afterwards. And then we can put a padlock on that door as well. 
So you can see here in this work order, this is the paragraph we're looking for. And I know that this is an LPS work order, but MCS is, is fairly close to this. Um, CoreLogic is fairly close to this as well. So when you're asked to complete lock work, read the paragraph in, in its entirety and make sure you take note of what you can do while you're at the property and what you should bid on and what the loan number is and what the key code is. Because if you don't take advantage and secure these buildings, they're going to send you back possibly at your own expense to do it or they'll send you back and pay you for it, but then you got to drive all the way back to do it. So take advantage of everything you can do at the property and document it and be sure to give us reasons why you did things and why you were not able to do things. When drilling a knob lock or deadbolt, do not damage the door itself. You will be responsible for repairing the door if you damage it. After you change the lock or deadbolt, make sure that it works. Open and close the door and verify that the lock engages and works. It's important that you do not leave a door unlocked because it does not engage. Always take the correct photos. Make sure that they are clear with good lighting. If drilling a lock set is the only way to get into the property, never drill an expensive irregular lock set without calling the GCP office first to gain approval. Always get approval before drilling an antique lock set. Never cause damage to the door itself. Be sure to have spare batteries or a corded drill and generator and have the proper drill bits on hand so that you can properly complete the job. Required photos. We need a photo before you remove the lock from the door. We need a close-up photo and one back away from the door so that we can see the entire door itself. During the lock change, if a drilling occurs, we need action shots. After you remove the lock, show us a picture of the hole where the lock was. Also show a picture of the lock in the kitchen drawer. We need a close-up picture of the lock work and one showing the entire door itself. A picture of the key in the lock is required. Make sure that we can read the key code that's on the key and for lock boxes we need to see the lock box code and also the keys inside of the lock box. Here's a set of lock work pictures. You can see that it's the same door with the same lock that was changed from the same angle. We also have an action shot of this guy drilling the lock. We can see that the lock set is put in the kitchen drawer and the key is inserted in the knob lock. We can also read the key code on the key itself. Here we can see the keys in the lock box and the key code to the lock box is clearly shown. Then we have a picture of the lock box and the new knob lock on the door. It's very important that we do not leave the boxes and our trash laying around after we complete the lock work. Never leave the old lock sets on the floor by the doors. Read your work order to determine whether they go in the kitchen drawer or with you in the trash. It's very important that you realize that lock work includes pool work. Pools have to be secured. Securing a pool to HUD specs. A pool is considered secure if there's a screened inland eye that's intact and the screen doors can be padlocked, or if there's a six foot high fence around the pool or backyard and the gates can be securely padlocked, or if a HUD approved pool cover has already been installed or a HUD approved pool boarding has already occurred. If these things require a padlock and the padlock can be completed according to the allowable on the work order, it's very, very important that you secure it with a HASPER padlock or if it cannot be done according to the allowable that you bid for it to be done. If you must bid to secure the pool, make sure that you bid the right items. If the fence is damaged, bid to repair the fence and padlock the gates. If the screens are damaged, bid to repair the screens and padlock the screen doors. If there is no lanai with screens or a fence, then based on the measurements of the pool, GCP will bid to board or cover the pool. Always supply the correct measurement of the pool and never eyeball an estimate of the size of the pool. If a pool is not secured to HUD specs, please read your work order because a client may allow a bid after the fact to secure the pool. Clients will usually want the least expensive way to secure the pool, such as padlocks or screens. Never start or complete a BATF pool securing without calling the GCP office first to get approval for the type of work and the amount of pay that you will receive. Never leave a pool unsecure without proper documentation of why it was left unsecure. If you are the least bit unsure, always call the GCP office and always supply the correct measurement of the pool and never eyeball an estimate of the size of the pool. If there are sheds and outbuildings present, be sure to read your work order to see if you can secure these with a padlock and hasp on your first visit. If not, always take a picture of the shed or outbuilding and bid for a padlock and hasp because this is an easy way to generate some revenue to your company and it is also required by our clients. 
Make sure that your padlock is always coded to the correct key code. Almost every time it's an A389 padlock. You can see a padlock installed with a hasp on a gate here. Make sure that you have your padlocks and hasp on hand before you arrive at the property. Garage doors are always included in the securing items of a work order. A picture of the garage door opener before it's unplugged should be taken and then one after it's unplugged. If a work order will allow you to install a padlock on the garage while you're there, take a picture before and after you install the padlock. If not, bid every single garage door that you see and make sure that we include that bid on your work order in PCR. Slider locks and thumb locks are a great way to produce revenue for your company. Always check the sliding glass doors to see if the existing lock works. If not, check your work order to see if you can secure it with a slider lock on your initial visit. If not, be sure to bid two per door. If any windows cannot be locked, always include a bid for a thumb lock. And again, some work orders will allow you to install a thumb lock on the initial visit, but be sure to read your work order carefully. It is important that you understand that FHA conveyance work orders require that every sliding glass door has two working locks on it. Now these two locks could be the existing lock and a slider lock, or it could be that you install or bid two slider locks. But remember that bars and broomsticks are not HUD approved sliding glass door locks. HUD requires that every window be secure, so be sure to check your work order to see if you can secure it on site or if you should bid for it. Here are some different types of window locks and thumb locks that you can purchase. Again, be sure to purchase these from a preservation supply company such as MFS Supply or US Hardware and have them on hand because going to a retail store is cost prohibitive. And lastly, just again a reminder, be sure to take all your trash from the property. Thank you.